Hello and welcome to The Crafting Shares. I'm Ruth from Beltane Gifts and today we're going to be making one of these. And this is your very own little witch. Now with this you can change the colour of the skin tone, you can change the colour of the hair, body, you can have her with a broomstick or without a broomstick, whatever you want really. And these make lovely little decorations, you can also use them as key rings. And the techniques that you use to make her, you can use to make other little characters too. So to make your very own witch you will need some finger protectors, a piece of brown pipe cleaner, two three millimeter diameter black plastic round beads, a pre-cut black circle of acrylic felt. So if you just cut this out and make it just slightly larger than the diameter of your dome, we're also gonna need a dome. This is made out of black Corridale roving. I've also got some splare Split. I've also got some spare black roving there and some Corridale roving, again both in Corridale and then I've got some just natural grey and natural brown rovings. I've got a needle um, just in a holder. This is just a generic fine needle so any fine needle will do. I've got some needles and threads so just a normal black cotton for attaching the eyes and I've also got two strands of sewing cotton um, or embroidery thread. I've got that in a gold colour. If you want to, you can felt it in using some gold coloured or yellow coloured fibre, but I find it's easier to do the fine details just by sewing them. You'll also need a pair of scissors. Now we're going to start by attaching our hat because this just lets us know where everything else needs to go. And to do that, what we're going to do is just quickly go over the top of our dome. And I'm just using 45 degree angle, just working my way around and rotating it just because I want to bring this top part in just a little bit. So if you just keep going round and round until it's just starting to taper into more of a point. And to do this, I'm just going right up to the top, just the central point at the top and coming down about centimetre and a half to two centimetres and just going back up and down as a stab and a rotate at the same time. Well, not quite the same time. You want to make sure that your needle's clear of your, your fibre before you move again. Otherwise, you could damage your needle. There we go. So if you can see there, just a bit more of a point towards the top. Once you've got that, we're just going to lay our felt circle on top. Grab some of our, our black fibre. And because this is roving, all the fibres are going in one direction. We want them to be just that bit messier, which will make it easier for us to, to create our shape and also give us a nice smoother finish. So just pull it apart, mess it up, and then once it's all messy, just gonna roll it into a bit of a ball between our palms. Go, place it on top. I'm just gonna hold it with my finger. And we're gonna stab around in a circle. So my needle is at a 45 degree angle pointing towards this top section here of our dome. And what we wanna do is leave about half a centimeter of rim to our hat, brim. And we're just gonna stab around in a circle, just catching bits of fiber just carefully tucking them through the felt into the dome below. And what this will do is this will create the outside edge of our hat and it'll also tack the whole thing together, just attaching it to the dome. And if you wanted a, a wider hat, just make your circle bigger, smaller hat, point your hat, then just make it smaller. Now mine's going over a little bit, so I'm just gonna make sure it's back in that center where I want it and just keep working your way around. What we're aiming for is for this fibre here, just where it meets the hat, just to start thickening up and giving us a nice foundation so that we can build on it and just create a bit more height with our hat. Now, if you want to, you can do this in sections. So just pull off a small section of fibre first and just build up and that will give you a lot more control. I'm doing it all in one go just because, well, that's how I tend to do it. But however you're more comfortable, do it that way. Now, if you find that it's taking ages to do, it could just be that your needle's just that little bit too fine in which case just swap down to a, a more of a medium sized needle slightly thicker needle just play it by ear okay so that's really quite well attached now I can give it a good old pull and it's not coming off so once you've got your base in place there what we can do is start working our way up and we want to create a cone shape so I'm sure I've done a video on cones if I haven't done a video on cones let me know down in the description and I'll add one on basically all you have to do is just imagine that in the center of your circle there's a point and from that point there's a line going all the way up to the top of where you want your hat to be now to create the cone what you have to imagine is that 
you're creating like a triangle and where you have a flat edge you want to be stabbing at a 40 uh, sorry a 90 degree angle to the edge you want to create so if I wanted to have a an angle like this I would stab at this angle to it so the easiest way to do it is get your your piece in front of you keep it fixed at this angle get your needle so that it's at a 90 degree angle to the plane you want to create and just stab now because the fiber at the top is really fluffy we'll work up to that so starting from the bottom I'm just going to do little jabs close together just working upwards maintaining that 90 degree angle and then I'm just going to keep rotating so after you've done a couple of runs just rotate it just a little bit and then stab again and if you want to you can keep your finger behind just to keep the fiber in place or if you find it easier you can lay it against your felting surface and just alter your angle now this is probably going to take several go rounds just to achieve the shape that you're after so take it slow and just keep an eye on the shape as you build it just so that you get that control that you need so you can see for mine it's starting to thicken up a little bit which is great and one of the benefits of doing it this way stabbing upwards is all your excess fiber is going up so you can get quite a tall hat if you want it now once it does start to thicken up you can start stabbing that little bit higher up and really focusing towards the point just because now that you've built up the the base section of the hat you've got something to attach your other fibers into now if you don't want your hat to be quite so tall what you can do once it's starting to come together just pop your finger on top and just squish it down a little bit and what you're doing is you're just pressing those fibers closer together and if you just hold it at the height you want your hat to be so i'd say about there for me and then start stabbing just all over again keep that 90 degree angle and what i'd recommend is once you've got it with your finger on top start stabbing downwards and what this will do is it'll just anchor those fibers down rather than pushing them up okay so once you get to kind of this stage where it's it's quite bulky um, but not very pointy what we can do is start focusing on getting that point how we want it so I'm going to look at the whole shape just see bits that are sticking out more than others the angle isn't quite right what I'm going to do is just go over it very slowly just little jabs close together and just start to bring everything in okay so that's starting to get there you can spend a lot more time on it if you want to it's just giving you the basic idea of how to do it and just keep going until you're you're happy with the shape now what you might find like with me you'll find that the the hat's just coming away from the edge a little bit so just again go around the edge this time I'm using an angle that's pointing straight down in towards the brim so 90 degrees to the brim I'm just catching the fibers at the very edge and I'm just stabbing straight down there we go once that's done you can just give the the hat a little bit of a, a roll between your hands and this just helps even out that cone shape you can also just kind of give the the point a little bit of a squeeze and a shape if you get any fluffy bits you can just stab those back into place or if you want to cheat just trim them off nobody's gonna know okay so we've got our hat and our brim now that we know where the hat is we can work on where everything else goes now for me mine's pointed towards the back so what I'm going to do is put my face at the front here so if you can see there it's pointed down don't worry that'll just I'll just make that the back of it and this the front now what I want to add first is the nose and cheeks so I've just grabbed my eggshell colored roving I'm going to pull off some sections so just pinch right on the edge and just pull and this just gives us the natural length of our fiber so I'm just going to mess it up and get those fibers going in different directions again just because it makes it easier when we're stabbing and gives a nicer finish and then what I'm going to do is just split this into three so we want two that are kind of the same size and one that's slightly larger and it's definitely easier to split up the bits if you want two bits the same split it up first just because it's a nightmare trying to work out how much fiber you used if you're trying to kind of match up pieces later go so I'll keep these two for the cheeks and the larger one for the nose and I'm just going to give that a bit of a rub between my hands go again mess it up any pieces that are just where you've got a section where all the fibers are stuck together just pull it apart and get that a bit more messy get as messy as you can and then what we're going to do is just lay it just in the center where you want your nose to be 
couple of stabs straight down just to hold it in place and then we're just going to outline the circle that we want for the nose so if you want a big nose make a big circle small nose small circle and do it with your needle just pointing in towards the center of your the circle you want to create so if you imagine there's a circle here imagine there's a point in the center your needle should always be stabbing towards that point so if you see I'm just changing the angle the way I'm stabbing and what I would recommend is just moving your your little witch and just rotating her as you go just because that way you can always see where you're stabbing and it gives you a lot more control now when you're working by the hat brim just be careful we don't want to actually stab into the brim itself so I'm just holding it back with my thumb just so I can see what I'm doing and stabbing just kind of straight down at those points now what you want to do is keep going round, just catching all this loose fibre and just do exactly the same as you've been doing, just stab it towards the centre of that circle and what should hopefully happen is the more that you stab, the more the fibre is going to get pulled in and tightened and just give you that nice nose shape that you're after. So take this slow, now if you find you get little bits that are just sticking out just at a really low angle, just catch them and push them back in because we want to get a nice circle shape. Okay, once it starts to come together, what you can do is just catch fibre from a little bit higher up and just tuck it down. I'm just catching just the very edge of the fibre. You don't want to stick it right in there, just, just kind of sweep it over the edge, over the surface of the, the nose. Just catch those fibres and stab. And what this should do is start tightening everything up and really defining the nose. There we go. Now, if you wanted to, you can keep going. You can stab over the whole thing. Thing if you wanted to. Personally I'm going to leave it like this just because I prefer kind of like the smoother softer shape. If you do stab into it you may find that you get to see the little holes where the needle's gone in. I don't really like that so <laughs> I'm just going to leave it like this which you can do because um, we're not actually going to be putting anything on top of it. We're not going to be sewing into it so you can leave it quite squishy. Now if you wanted to you can leave it like this and just have the nose. I quite like having the little cheeks, I think they're cute, so I'm going to add a couple of those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually split what I've put aside for one cheek and use it for both and you can always add more later if you want to. I just, uh, yeah, I think I just overestimated how much I'd need. That's even-ish. If you want to be really precise, you can weigh your fibre out before you add it, but I'm just going to estimate. So exactly the same as before, mess up your fibre, give it a bit of a roll. We're going to place it just to the side of the nose and I like mine to be just kind of touching. So I'm going to stab just along the side of the nose first just to anchor it and then just outline my circle which is going to be slightly smaller than the nose. And again I'm going up to the, the brim of the hat but not stabbing into the hat. And I'm just catching this fibre and working my way around. Now if like me you can see there's an obvious kind of line there, a bundle of fibre, what you can do is just really carefully with the point of your needle or if you've got an awl or a metal spike or a fine knitting needle that would do too. What I'm just going to do is just brush it over the line and stab it just to the far side. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of wrapping it over itself just so that it's less obvious where those lines were and give a good stab down the side of the nose and it should give us just a nice little notch there between the nose and the cheek where we can add our, our eye later. Once you're happy with your cheek, time to do the other one. I can do that without you watching. There we go, so that's the other cheek on. Now, normally what I would do is do my eyes last, but because I want to add the hair next and I can use the hair to hide where I've done my sewing, I'm gonna do the eyes first. So if you take your needle and black thread and your two beads, we're going to turn around our little witch, sew up from the side into the back of the head. I don't put a knot in my cotton, so I'm just going to pull it till it disappears inside the, the dome that we've used. I'm going to do a couple of little stitches just to anchor the thread. Then sew through, and what we want to do is come in just between the nose and the cheek. Pop one of your beads onto the thread, sew back through to where you did your stitches. Pull tight just so that it just indents a little bit. Just check it's in the right place before you do your stitches. Once you're happy with it, another couple of stitches at the back of the head and then just do the same on the other side. Just check that they're about even. Do your last couple of stitches at the back of the head and then sew through and out through the side. Find your scissors, pull the thread tight, just pop your scissors against the side and snip and that should completely hide all your that should completely hide all your stitches and yarn. Now, if like me, you find your nose has just gone a little bit fluffy, just grab your felting needle again and just go round, just 
the outside of the, the nose, just catch any loose fibres. You can also trim them if you need to. And if you decided that you didn't actually want a circle for your nose, you can stab in from the sides and just shape it a little bit. Just give it more of a, a nose shape. But I think I'm just going to stick with the circle. So there we go. There's our, our little face in place. What we want to do now is add some hair. So I'm just going to turn around. You can use whatever colour you like. I'm using the grey for this. So grab your roving and I do definitely recommend using roving rather than carded just because this gives you the added length to felt into place. So hold it lightly in one hand, pinch right on the edge with the other and pull and this just gives us our natural length of the roving. I'm just going to grab a few more bits again pinching right at the end and pulling and what this does is it just gets all the fiber so that it's all going in the same direction and the same length and you can do this in little sections if you want to I'm doing it all in one piece just to save time but if you're new to adding fiber like this then I definitely recommend doing it gradually and what you do is you just lay it just underneath where the hat is so that the bend or the middle of your fibre is just underneath the brim of the hat. So I'm using my finger just to pull the, the brim back and we want to start from one side just by the cheek there and with the needle what I'm going to do is just do a little stab just pointing towards the cheek just running underneath the hat and I'm going to work my way round just doing that and take it slow because you have got stitches under there you've got the brim of the hat under there I'm just going to once I get about halfway turn it round do the same the other side again pointing towards the cheek and the reason I'm doing this is because we want the fibre to go right to the cheeks and you're not going to see it so much here at the back now you'll find it's always best to just hold half of the hair don't hold both bits because if you do then you haven't got any give to stab into place so you'll find once it's starting to sit in place as you stab you can see that there it, the fibre starts to fold and this is good this is just showing you that the fibers are getting sucked in and the fiber is creating that V so again I'm just going to work from the other side again just make sure I've got fiber all the way up to the edge if you find you've got gaps or if you're doing it bit by bit then just take some more roving and exactly the same way just lay it just lengthwise across and then stab into place go once it's starting to fold what we're going to do is we're just going to just really carefully just bring it down so that it's all pointing downwards away from the hat then just going to maneuver it into place and just stab along the edge you can see there where the gray fiber meets we're just going to stab just make sure it's doubly attached and because it's under the brim of the hat you can't actually see where it's joined and I am holding on to it but I'm pushing it slightly so that there's a loop of fiber so it's it's got all that extra fiber to get stuck in. and if you've got a metal awl you can use that I use the point of my needle which I really shouldn't so don't be like me use a, an awl or something else just to um, brush through the hair and just get it all going in the same direction and you'll probably find like me that you've got a bit that's just a bit longer than anything else what we're going to do is just give it a quick trim so I want it to be quite long I'm just going to style it so it's just slightly shorter than the body so if you grab your scissors again and just little trims it's better to um, leave it longer than you think you'll need and then you can always shorten it otherwise you could uh, end up having to replace the whole hair if you go too short so then I'll trim go so we've got our hair now and our face so it's time to add a little bit of detail so for mine I like to add a belt and for that I'm going to be using my grey roving again so if you just grab your roving and this time we're just going to pinch a section off the edge go because we want it to be reasonably long and if you find like mine it's just that bit too thick what you can do is just draw the fiber out just lightly hold it in one hand and with your other hand just pinch the end and just pull we don't want to pull and separate it completely what we want to do is just drag the fibers so that we can lengthen the whole thing and just make it that little bit thinner and it might take a little bit of time just to go over the whole thing but just to get it kind of the same thickness all the way down and once this is done I've got plenty more than I need here um, but I'm going to leave it all as one continuous for now what I'm going to do is just lay it over the body get the hair out of the way and I like to have my joints at the back because I don't want them to be to be obvious I'm just going to lay one of the ends just over the back and 
pointing this is my short end I'm going to point towards the rest of the fiber and just stab in so I'm stabbing about a 45 degree angle again and just catching and tucking that fiber in you can see it being just caught there and that's just so it's nice and secure once you've done that making sure you've got plenty of looseness in your fiber again so that um, we can tuck it in I'm just going to do some little stabs just along the length once it's attached what I'm going to do is just turn it around so that I'm stabbing from my right because I'm right handed and stabbing towards the left and what I'm doing is little jabs just catching the fibre and I'm stabbing at the top and the bottom of it and what I want to do is create just a nice little band of the grey and because you're stabbing in a line you're catching those loose fibres and they're going to end up stabbed into a line and looking hopefully quite neat and you can see I'm not actually holding the fibre that I'm stabbing into place in any way and that's great it just means that there's plenty of give in it so that we can tuck it into place if you were left-handed I definitely recommend working the other way so working from your left to your right now if you wanted a wider belt just do your lines further apart if you wanted a thinner belt do them closer together I'm going for kind of a reasonably thin belt here now I haven't quite reached the back yet I'm going to leave this fiber loose I'm just going to pull off a section there we go just because there's lots of it so I'm leaving myself with quite a big tail here and the reason I'm not finishing just yet is because I want to add a belt buckle so I'm just going to make sure the line is kind of quite neat at the front there and how I want it you can go over the rest of it later and what I'm going to do is grab my needle and embroidery thread and this is two strands if you can see that there it's very fiddly stuff there's two strands and it's folded double but you can use as much or as little as you like what I'm going to do is just come in from the side just like we did with adding the eyes pull until the end is inside the body do a couple of little stitches sew through and we want to get it in line with the nose just in the middle and I'm just going to do some little lines so just going to do one stitch there that goes over the whole belt and comes back where I started then I'm going to sew to the side and do the same again and what I'm doing is just creating just a little rectangle out of thread and you can go over this a couple of times if you want to just until you get the thickness you want and I'm trying to get my stitches so that they overlap slightly just so that I don't basically just so it doesn't look as though you've got lots of separate threads but it looks like it's all one thing now my sewing skills aren't amazing <laughs> I can get by but if you're better at sewing and you can do a better job definitely do a better job and lastly I'm just going to do a little half stitch just into the middle of the the gray rectangle there and then come out where my stitches are at the back there we go so that's our little buckle at the back I'm just going to do another stitch or two again try and keep them as small as you can we want to be able to hide this easily if we can once you've got that in place just sew through to the side again with your scissors just press against the body and pull the thread when you snap or snip there shouldn't be any showing then it's a case of grabbing your needle again and just finishing off the belt by stabbing over the top of your stitches and just lining up with where you started off at the back if like me your sewing's showing just a little bit just if you've got a little bit of a tail left just bring it back the other way and just add an extra bit of fiber over the top there again it's not going to show so you don't really need to do this but I quite like to finish it off that way and then it's just a case of going backwards and forwards just smoothing everything out catching any of these loose fibers and just belting them into place and if you find that your belt is spread a little bit and is too wide in places all you have to do is just stab from either side just catching that fiber and stabbing it inwards and I like to do this from top and bottom now I'm just stabbing straight down just getting rid of some of that bulk of fiber and securing it and just spend as much time as you need to on this just to get it nice and smooth and how you want it you might find like me you've got bits of hair stuck in it so just felt those in if you need to just snip them with your scissors again you might need to just pop the hair back into place you can if you find that it's just going a little bit too fly away for you just give it a little bit of a a brush with your needle and then just a couple of little stabs just randomly you don't need to do too much stabbing at this it's just to hold it in place rather than to flatten it and felt it so there's our hair in place and lastly what I want to do is add a hand and the broom so for the broom we're going to make that separately first and 
For this we're going to need our natural brown fibre, our pipe cleaner and what's left of our golden thread. You can remove it from the needle now. I can take my finger protectors off and what we're going to do is find the natural length of our brown fibre again just by grabbing it in your hand, pinching a section off the top and pulling. Now with this it's got some very long sections as well as short sections, it's just nature of this fibre and um, so what I'm going to do is just grab the longest sections and just pull them off and I'm just going to keep the slightly shorter fibre for this and put the long stuff to the side. I'm going to keep that because I can use it for other projects later. Now with this stuff what I want to do is take my pipe cleaner, lay it so there's a small section over the top. I'm then going to fold my pipe cleaner so it's like a shepherd's crook shape. I'm going to bend my fibre up so that it's kind of bent in the middle and with my pipe cleaner I'm just going to twist and twist it as tight as you can. We want to kind of smooth the whole thing out. There we go and that should give you something that looks a bit like this and what we're going to do is just get the fibre going up in the same direction grab our thread and I'm just going to wrap it round so I'm holding one end just along the length of the pipe cleaner and I'm just going to keep wrapping go then I'm going back down to where I started and I'm just going to tie the ends together in a knot and with the scissors just trim off those ends. Now what you can do is just roll the end of your broom together between your hands just to start that felting process and we can then just snip off the excess that we don't need. If you want it to be shorter it can be. I'm just going to stick with it like this I think. There we go so that gives us our bit of a broom. If you want to instead of just folding the end of your pipe cleaner if you've got a slightly longer pipe cleaner what you can do is fold the pipe cleaner in half and twist it all the way down to the bottom which will give you just a firmer broom but I'd only got a short piece of pipe cleaner so uh, mine's going to be just a little bit wagglier. Once we've done that we're going to grab our little witch. Actually I think I can probably get away with the broom being slightly shorter so what I'm going to do is just fold up part of the end, go and just twist that too. There we go, it's not quite as waggly now. <laughs> so there we go, we're going to hold that next to my little witch and she's going to be, I think she's going to be left handed because she can be. And I'm going to grab just a piece of my eggshell coloured roving. Again, make it nice and messy, roll it into a bit of a ball and then what we're going to do is take the fibre, we're going to lay it over the top of our broom and we're going to carefully stab around in a circle so that the circle goes over the top of the pipe cleaner. Now we don't want to stab the pipe cleaner because it's made of metal and it will cause damage to your needle. So what we can do is just really carefully just catch that fibre and I'm stabbing straight down at the moment just because it gives me more control. So 90 degree angle to the body. I'm just catching it and stabbing it to either side. This is going to be her hand holding the broom. Now once the fibre starts to tighten it's going to be wrapping around that pipe cleaner so you can release a little bit and start stabbing in at a lower angle so 45 degree angle then round the circle just catching and tucking it in and under. So when you stab near the pipe cleaner just take it slow and just be careful and I'm just stabbing to either side of the pipe cleaner just to help tighten everything up. There we go and there is our little witch. Spend a little bit of time if you like just getting any loose fibres out of the way, just smartening her up but that's the basic idea. Now be sure to click on that subscribe button and the bell icon so that you don't miss out on future videos. Next time we're going to be making one of these and thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay warm, I will see you next time.